Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King and today I'm going to be giving you part 2 of what if Naruto was Shisui's brother with the yellow Sharingan. Remember to get this one too. 100 like as usual. Share this to all of your friends on your social media platform. And also guys, I posted a brand new episode of what if Naruto was a Uchiha that created his own village? So go ahead, check out that and yeah, enjoy. And also guys, if you're new, yes, I indeed have four more channels, which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. All the links will be down in the description. So go ahead and obliterate that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. So without further ado you are wasting any more time, how about we jump right into this, begin now guys. So, to do a bit of a recap from the last part that we left off, a young Naruto Uchiha was training with his older brother Shisubi Uchiha as the both of them were clashing against each other. Shisubi was much too fast for Naruto but he was fully aware of that so he decided to catch him off guard. Well he tried, however his efforts still fail, yet still Shisubi praised him because Naruto was a genius in the making. His mind, his tactics, his quick thinking. As he was a genius in the making, yes. Just like himself and Itachi. However, Naruto wasn't happy after the battle. Because he was concerned. As Shisui asked him what he was concerned about. It was mostly because of the rising tension between the clan and the people as well. However, Shisui told him not to worry about it that... He had it covered, that he would make sure that everything plays out smoothly. The next morning we could see both Naruto and Sasuke heading towards the academy. The both of them were rather popular there, as Naruto was rather similar to his older brother with a cheery attitude and a lot of people liked him. Sasuke was always trying to act cool like he was above everything. Therefore, a lot of the girls still like him as well. Returning home that night, Naruto was surprised to see his brother not home, as he thought that he would already be here, but he was wrong. He decided to just wait up, but he ended up falling asleep. While that was going on, Shisui, with only one eye, was writing a note, as he wanted to spear Naruto away from the curse of hatred. So he made a move, a move that he hoped was the right one. As he decided to go through with it. As he went to pay Itachi a visit. It was early that morning that Naruto was awoken by a knock. However he was confused. Why would his brother knock on the door? That confused him. So he decided to answer it. As he found. Two Uchi of the police force standing there. Naruto was rather confused by why they were here. And the look on their face. As he asked them where his brother was. Naruto started to lose it, seeing look in their eyes as he looked around, as they told him the news. Mikato had came over to be there for Naruto, as Shisui was a good family friend, and now Naruto was all alone, as she came to be there for him. However, he wasn't in the mood to really talk or really do anything, he was just quiet. The funeral. As Naruto did not even cry, he was just empty, not even doing anything. He was broken on the inside. Shisui, his world, his older brother, was gone. A crow came by his window that night and handed him a note. 
it was she so we apologizing for committing suicide saying that he hold a lot of guilt for what he did it was how he got his mongetio because he allowed jealousy to take over him and he made a comrade die and he never truly got over it however Nuta ripped it apart though refusing to believe this whoever was trying to fake his brother's death he refused to believe it it was soon after that Naruto came across a rather dreadful event as he watched Sasuke pass out with the Sharingan in his eyes. Then he saw Itachi. Itachi took the role as a killer, telling Naruto that he was the one that killed Shisui in order to test his eye capability. Shisui did not expect it as he cut him down. Itachi was shocked when he saw the red of their Sharingan but in Naruto's eyes it became black. And the Tomos, two of them in each, they were yellow. Itachi then saw something more shocking. Every ounce of chakra in Naruto's body was being pushed out to the surface, expanding his coils, boosting his strength and his speed. Itachi almost took him a bit too lightly before he had to place him under a genjutsu, using his mongetio. Even then, it seems like Naruto was about to get up but he indeed passed out. Itachi was surprised but he had to leave as Naruto chakra surge had summoned the others. Naruto woke up in the hospital. It was soon after that he went to find Sasuke. Naruto immediately attacked him and told him to tell him what he knew. But after realizing that Sasuke knew nothing, Naruto lied there. As he told Sasuke straightforward that he was going to find Itachi and he was going to kill him. As Sasuke was going to do the same thing. So they were on the same page. Hiroson believed that the two of them should be in close proximity to each other during this event. He got the both of them in the same, a two-bedroom apartment, two bathrooms. As they were well taken care of, Naruto wanted the scrolls though. As Hiroson had removed all of them, expecting something like this. However, those were too dangerous. As he would give them back though when he thought that he was ready. Naruto was angry but he said nothing. The man was the Hokage. However, both him and Sasuke snuck into the library and found out more about chakra control. They weren't even out of the academy yet. As the both of them learned, the tree walking. As Naruto understood why, he was in the hospital longer than Sasuke. When his strange Sharingan activated, they expanded his coils. So his chakra was basically burnt out, returning back to the academy. Everyone was apologetic, but Naruto's demeanor and personality had completely taken a change. There was one person though, her name was Mito Uzumaki, as she came to speak to Naruto. She wasn't like the other girls, she wasn't always fussing over him. In fact, she was the only girl that he could have a serious conversation with. As Naruto kept his training up, he even made Sasuke relive that night by shouting at him over and over in order. For him to activate the Sharingan. But even then Naruto was stronger. It was just as Shisui said. He was a prodigy in the making. As his strength kept on growing until. The graduation came. It was easy for Naruto to pass. As both him and Sasuke ate the test. Naruto went to the forest that night to work on something. As he was creating a jutsu of his own. However he came across a little problem. As Mito was facing off against Mizuki. Mizuki had stolen the scroll. Well, he made Mito do it and now, they were fighting against one another. There was another one there named Toji. He underestimated Naruto, as Naruto took him down. That is when Naruto found the scroll, as he looked at it. He stood there, as he had a decision to make, as he had a scroll that could give him power beyond his wildest imagination. The jutsu's inside. As he picked it up, so yeah guys, basically as we left off you guys can switch across the blade of yourself so it be in this new episode. Upon arriving at the scene, the Anvus had made quick work, separating their forces, the others, making sure that Mito and Aruka were alright after facing off against Mizuki. However, the others had quickly made their way, trying to track down Toji with the forbidden scroll before he leave the village, they had to find him. As they were dashing through the forest, the sensor of the group picked up on something. 
all of them landed. Two landed in the trees and one landed on the ground. When they saw someone dragging something on the ground. He gazed up towards them and they saw his golden sharingan reflecting within the darkness. As they came down, they came across none other than Naruto Uchiha as he was holding the leg of Toji and dragging him across the ground. In his other hand he had the forbidden scroll and pulling it along as he was heading back to the village. They quickly glanced towards the body of Toji as they noticed that he was no longer amongst the living. Time skip. Naruto was seated within the office as he was telling Harrison what had happened. I was training in the forest when I saw him running away with the scroll. He said that I was a nuisance that he had to annihilate. He couldn't afford for me to tell anyone or waste any more of his time so he attacked me. However, he underestimated me. He never expected for me to hit him with a fireball jutsu. I then impaled three kunais into his hand. I flipped over and knocked him out with a kick to the skull. I reached and picked the scroll up. That is when I realized that it was something indeed important. And then I heard a ruckus. I went to investigate with the scroll in hand. But it seems my efforts off. Placing him unconscious for a long period of time did not pan out as I thought. He came to the moment he saw me. Despite the pain that he was definitely in, he attacked me, trying to use his body weight to overpower me. I slipped a kunai into my hand and thrust forward and he pierced himself right on top of it and he died. So I was dragging him back here along with the scroll which I'm sure was rather important, was it not? Yes, it was indeed a very important scroll. And I thank you for your efforts of bringing it back here as and said. Can I go now, said Naruto. I'm sure Sasuke is wondering where I am. Harrison nodded, dismissing Naruto. He had told Sasuke that he would be back in about an hour, but around three and a half hours had passed. Harrison watched as Naruto left. He could tell that the child did not like him that much and he knew exactly why. It was because he refused to give him the Uchiha scrolls. However, majority of them contain rather dangerous techniques and Hiruzen couldn't just allow such dangerous techniques to fall in children's hand as he didn't want them to go overboard and hurt themselves. He had placed the both of them together believing that they could help each other in the grief that they were facing. However, their grief has seemed to turn into anger rather quickly. On more than one occasion, Hiruzen had people watching them. And they were both pushing each other to the limit. Time and time again, Naruto mostly. He had the both of them spoke to Inuichi to try and get them out to handle their emotions that they were currently experiencing but... The only thing that they seem to feel right now is anger for Itachi. Hiruzen released a breath as he hated what it was doing to them. As it seems like Naruto had turned this anger into an obsession. Time after time again, day after day, week after week, he just kept on pushing himself. And with this anomaly that he possessed. In history, Hiruzen had never heard about a yellow Sharingan before. Even now it did not make much sense. And they did not know the full capabilities of this. However, here is in fear that their hunger for revenge was going to cause them to do something rather stupid. And he really did not want it to come to that. Time skip. Sasuke heard the door open as he made his way. Exiting his room but Naruto pushed past him immediately. Rushed into his room. What the hell is going on Sasuke said. Seeing the urgency in the way that he walked. As Naruto got a large piece of parchment paper and spread it over his night table, knocking over his lamp and everything else. What's going on Sasuke said raising his tone. Be quiet Naruto said. There's something I need to do. Quickly as well. As he opened his drawer and pulled out a pot along with a brush. Dipping the brush in the ink pot, Naruto started to write. Sasuke stood there as he watched. Naruto was carving hand signs 
and strange names. He soon realized that these were the names of techniques. As Naruto wrote and wrote and wrote, unraveling the paper and wrote and wrote and wrote. Sasuke noticed that his Sharingan was activated as he was staring at the paper, as he was carving and writing with perfect accuracy. When he finally came to a stop, around 45 minutes later, Naruto checked it over with a smirk on his face. Okay, what the hell is that Sasuke said? My training ended up taking an unexpected turn. It turns out that Mizuki, along with a partner, tried to steal a forbidden scroll. Mito was somehow involved in this. It seems she came out on top doing a confrontation with herself and Mizuki. Toji, I came across him while I was training. And we ended up fighting. And I took his life, said Naruto. This was the first time Naruto was killing someone, but the detrimental effect that most people say that taking the life of someone would stain your soul and this and that. Strangely enough, he did not feel it. But that's not the important part. I found the forbidden scroll. Five minutes. That was all I needed. My eyes seemed to have a perfect vision of copying what it sees, Naruto said. And this is all I got from it, said Naruto. As he watches the paper start to dry, these are techniques that are forbidden for a reason. Techniques that make some of the greats great. And we're going to learn every single one of them, said Naruto. With a smile on his face, his golden eyes glowing. Time skip. As Naruto stood, at the academy entrance, waiting. That is when he saw Mito finally arrive. She looked up and saw him. Naruto, she said. We need to talk, he said. As she followed him as he walked, he came to a stop in the hallway. Were you aware that I was there during the altercation with Mizuki? Yeah, the Hokage told me about that, given what I could have seen from. And hear from the people talking, I presume that you were able to defeat Mizuki. I'm curious though. How? said Naruto looking at her. Oh, that. Well, you see, I learned this super secret awesome technique from the scroll that I accidentally stole, she said, scratching the back of her head. Look, it's pretty cool. She brought her hand together. Shadow clone jutsu. Poof. A clone appeared beside her. Awesome, right? And it's not an illusion like the one they teach in the academy. Look, as she poked it. So, I was created for a demonstration, the clone said. Yeah, pretty much, she said. Patting it on the back before dispelling the technique. I was able to use it to crush Mizuki. She said, cracking her knuckles. And he's now somewhere in prison rotting for his actions. Of tricking me. Well, I'm not sure that that is all, said Naruto. Well... I was just curious about that, said Naruto. Well then, let's head to class. Hey, wait. Did you, um... She looked to the ground. Did you hear everything that was said? During... When I first... Saw Mizuki. And he was shouting. No, not really, said Naruto. I was dealing with his partner after all. Why? Should I have? Oh no, it's nothing. I was just curious, she said. Well, let's get moving. As Naruto watched her walk ahead of him, his eyes watching her curiously. Time skip at the office. Harrison had been the one to implement the teams. While, usually they go with the top and then the dead lass and the top girl. For Team 7 this time, he was not going to do that. Harrison had to place both Sasuke and Naruto on Team 7. And that was because they possessed the Sharingan. And Kakashi was the only person that possessed the Sharingan who could teach them. As for Mito, she contained the Nine Tails. If anyone can subdue her, if she was to lose control, it would be Kakashi. Not to mention he figured that it was best for him to be the one to teach her, to guide her. After all, her father was the one that teach and guided him. 
So yes, he figured that was the best. Time skip, back at the academy. Seated on the roof was Team 7. Well, not officially yet. Kakashi had taken 3 hours to arrive, as he just introduced himself, which really wasn't anything at all. Now handing the reins over to Mito, the first thing that came out of her mouth. My name is Mito Uzumaki, your future Hokage, she said. I like ramen, as she started to list out the things that she liked, and the things that she disliked, and once again shouting that she was going to be the Hokage. Well, if there was one thing she was insistent, Naruto thought to himself, Sasuke was next. As his main thing was to find and kill Itachi, however he did not set it in that way and made the Uchiha great once again. The attention was now turned on Naruto, who introduced himself. Most of what he said was rather basic, his name, he didn't have much likes or dislikes. His goal, his admiration, his hopes. Kakashi found something strange as he gazed into the boy's eyes. There was something there that gave him a strange feeling just for a brief moment but it was gone the next. I intend to restore the Uchiha clan better than it ever was even in its prime. But before that though. I have to get rid of all the virus and scourge that is waiting down the name of the Uchiha. And that was it, he was finished. So Kakashi told them that they had another test. As Mito face dropped, please don't be a written test, she said over and over in her mind. But it was not, it seems, given the way he phrased it, as they were supposed to meet tomorrow at Training Ground 7. Time skip. After waiting once again, which was truly annoying, Kakashi finally arrived. As Mito shouted at him for being late. Oh, sorry about that, you see. There was a black cat on my path, so I had to take the long way around. The three of them sweat dropped, wondering if this guy was being serious. However, Naruto knew who he was. But he was rather put off by his whole demeanor. His brother had told him about several competent shinobis that he himself had worked with. Kakashi Hatake was one of them, as his brother had mentioned him more than a few times. However, Naruto was put off by this lazy, careless attitude that he seemed to possess. This was not what he was expecting. There was something else that Naruto wasn't remembering. He was much younger when he heard something about this Hatake. Why the people within his clan was even talking about him. There must be something truly special about him, Naruto thought. Yet, he couldn't allow his rather soft demeanor to fool him. Naruto found it strange when Kakashi told him about the bell test. The moment he said begin, Naruto sat down on the ground. Sasuke was the only one that jumped away. Mito's actions were clear. She pointed towards Kakashi. I'm going to be the one to take you down and get those bells. After all, there is nothing that you can do to stop a future Hokage. She charged forward without, not even a moment of hesitation. Naruto watched as Mito. God danced around rather easily. Kakashi simply stepped in her owner as he pulled out his book and started to read. As he held his foot out, making her trip. Mito crashed nearby a tree when she noticed a bell on the ground. Her eyes widened as she reached for it but she fell for the trap as she was tied in a tree. Kakashi returned back to his starting position as Naruto was seated there, his right hand resting on his cheek as he was in a thinking position. That is when he got to his feet. So, you want to give it a try now, do you? Kakashi said. Naruto brought his hand up and flashed through hand sign at a rather fast pace, surprising Kakashi not only by the hand sign but that he was going to pull this off. He heard a lot about this kid. He knew exactly the bloodline that he was a part of, not just the Uchiha clan but 
Shi Sui Uchiha was his older brother, a prodigy of the Uchiha clan if there ever was one, an immaculate shinobi that was feared by thousands. His name alone strike fear into the hearts of his enemies. And now, Kakashi watches a steaming fireball rush towards him, something that he quickly evade. Kakashi had to move as the kunai slammed into the tree. A surprised look written on his face but his one eye expressed it rather well. The kid threw kunais in all directions that he believed that he would appear after using super speed to get away from his fireball. His prediction was good. He ran as Kakashi stood there, bending his knees as he used chakra to elevate his jump through to jump into the tree. Swinging his fist as they started to trade blows. Kakashi used his one hand but soon found himself rather surprised by Naruto fighting style. As he was using his entire body, not just his hands or his legs. He was using every part of himself, even his head. Moving and twisting. Evading. Even using the pressure of his weight to try and catch Kakashi off guard. However, Kakashi kicked him away. As Naruto rolled before coming to a stop, he brushed himself off. Kakashi watched him curiously as he started to walk away, simply leaving the area. No, that was odd, he thought to himself. As Mito was struggling to get down, trying to reach for the kunai in her pouch, however, she accidentally let all of them fall out. She heard the rope. Something happened to it as she started to fall, but... She landed directly in Ruta's arms. Her eyes widened as she stared into his dark eyes. Ruta? Let's go, he said. He did not put her down, he simply took off. Leaving her a bit flustered. In this rather weird position. Sasuke, who was watching Kakashi, preparing to strike, heard something as he turned to see. Ruta just letting Mito down. What's going on, he said. We need to talk, said Naruto. This whole thing is a sham. What? The both of them said. Time skip. Kakashi was just arriving. After all the other Jonins had left. You're late. Hiruzen release a breath. As he should be expecting of this from Kakashi by now. As the man walked inside. What can I say, he said, scratching his cheek. They surprised me. They did? Yes. As he sat down in the chair. For one thing, Sasuke Uchiha is rather arrogant, but he's not above listening to Naruto. However, there is some friction between him and Mito. As the both of them has a rather strong personality when it comes to listening to each other. So yes, there was a bit of a problem as I watch over them. However, Naruto was able to be the peacemaker in the group. As for Mito, she's headstrong and rush into things without even thinking. However, despite their little scuff, Sasuke will watch her back and so will Naruto without hesitation. As for Naruto himself, the boy is smart. It's not just in academics. It's in his whole life, the way he perceived things. He attacked me without warning. He was just testing me. His knowledge of predicting where someone will arrive is rather spot on. It wasn't only that though. He took charge of the situation realizing that he could not defeat me on his own. After testing my skills I realized. So, he made the other two work with him. To attack me all at once. They still failed but I passed all three of them said Kakashi. Because they worked together as a team. They completely took their minds off the bell. At a moment there they were just fighting as a team. With the sole ambition to take me down. I believe that this team would be just alright he said. Harrison was glad to hear that. However. I need you to take their training seriously. No goofing around. I need you to truly focus on them. 
each and every one of them. Despite what it might seem right now, both Naruto and Sasuke has a hunger inside of them. A hunger for revenge that I want you to sort out as the time go by. However, the both of them need to feel appreciated that there is something here that can actually help improve them. Their desire for revenge is not something that can just simply go away like that. So I need you to put in the extra step to make sure that they feel like they're actually stepping forward and evolving in their strength and growing. I was able to commandeer all the scrolls from the Uchiha compound. Little by little, I will pass it on. I need you to focus on that with them, while helping Mito as well. You and I both know the collateral damage that might befall with her. I need you to make sure that she can carefully and properly take care of herself in dangerous situations. It's only a matter of time now before her name is worldwide. That girl, as much as it seems like she's always screaming out about becoming Hokage and many people don't believe that she will actually do it. I see it within her, that strength, the will of fire that is unshakable and unbreakable. And it's up to you to nurture it and bring it out in each and every one of them. Am I understood? This was a huge pressure on one man's shoulder, but Kakashi had made a promise to an old friend a long time ago to help the new generation Uchiha's if he ever became a teacher. And it just so happened that he was teaching the final two. And the man who was there for him during his depression his own teacher who was by his side, who helped him. He had his daughter to look after and he was going to make damn sure that he helped all three of them. Time skip. Kakashi stuck to his word. First, chakra control. The most horrible was Mito. Her chakra control was downright awful. For the next two weeks, he focused on making her learn how to control her chakra. Yes, he focused on that alone, for her, while, for the boys he helped them refine their taijutsu. He had to say, as skilled as Sasuke was, Naruto was leagues ahead of him. In terms of his quick thinking, his overall skills in taijutsu, and his quick work in ninjutsu, Kakashi would say that Naruto could make a rather low tier chunin right now. Yes, that is how much he think of his skills, even though he was just starting out. At the end of the two weeks for Mito, Kakashi started to teach them the tree walking. The boys got it instantaneously. Kakashi found that rather suspicious. Yes, it was rather shocking. They got it the exact moment he showed them, only for him to later find out that they already knew how to do it, as they were just basically showing off. It took Mito no less than a day, as Naruto had showed her. With more fine detail, Kakashi was rather enjoying how much their teamwork was coming along, with them helping one another. The next step was water walking, which was a lot more difficult. Kakashi was surprised that they already knew that one as well. He had to say, they were much more far along than he expected. So he focused on Mito for that part. Retrieving two of the scrolls from Harrison. Kakashi saw three fire-based techniques that would suit them rather well. Speaking of fire-based techniques, given the fact that they already knew how to do the fireball jutsu, Kakashi brought forward three pieces of paper. What are these? Mito said looking at it. It's a chakra paper, said Naruto. So you already know about this, I see. Kakashi said, it determined your chakra nature. Naruto said, that's right, said Kakashi with a eye smile. Before I start to teach you guys ninjutsu, given the fact that you two already know the fireball jutsu, before we go on, any other that I should be aware of? Sasuke shook his head no. He looked towards Naruto. Well, I am working on something, said Naruto. 
but I'm not close enough for it to be considered anything that much. Kakashi nodded at that. As for you, Mito, you don't know any offensive techniques. So first we will have to find out your chakra nature. Go ahead and pump your chakra into that, just like how I taught you, he said to her. Mito did as she was told. She watches the paper split in half. The right section being split in several pieces, the left section got in soggy and damp. What's that, she said. Oh yeah, forgot about that part, he said. Forgotten to tell them what it was, but he presumed that these two already know. So his attention was mostly targeted towards Mito. If it was earth, it would have crumbled. Lightning, it would have crinkled. Fire, it would have burned. Water, it would have sogged. And wind, it would have sliced. So that mean I have two. I knew it. I was the greatest ever. All right, relax, he said. It's rather good to have two, but it's not that extremely rare. Most Jonins end up learning another as they excel. However, to be branded with two, just like that, is rather impressive, he said. Now you too. Sasuke went first. One side of his paper burned, and the other side got crinkled. Lightning and fire, he said. A little smirk on his face. So you have two as well? Yeah, Sasuke said. As him and Mito were sniping at each other every now and then, as the both of their attitude were always clashing, even from just saying something simple. As Naruto went next, what happened though was rather surprising. The more, the affinity that they have, the more it affected the paper. The right side of the paper crinkled upon itself, turning into a small piece of ball in his hand, while the left side which happened first? The left side was destroyed. Kakashi was shocked as he saw the embers of flames. However, it just didn't burn, it was destroyed. But the embers of flames were there to show that it was fire. Wait, what does that mean, said Mito? Well, it seems like Naruto fire affinity was more rare than I thought. As does his lightning as well. Seems like the both of you share the same, he said, looking towards him and Sasuke. However, it was clear that Naruto's were greater, and Mito pointed that out, causing Sasuke to glare at her, as she simply glared back at him. As Naruto's mind was not there at all, his mind was focusing on his yellow flames. Maybe that was the reason, but maybe his flames were not just capable of burning, and that gave him some new idea for the technique that he was currently working on. They went on several D ranks in the process. However, most of the time, their thing was focused on training, yes. As Mito, affinity was rather rare when it came to win. There was not many win users within the village. There was a lot of water users though. So, the training was rather long. And it took up a lot of their time. Just like that, two and a half months went by. Team 7 had performed the less D rank missions out of all the newly graduate teams because most of their time was focused on training and none of them were complaining about that. Kakashi found himself actually enjoying watching as each of the members elevated and evolved to new heights as he felt proud. It was the first time that he chose to actively show up early and not go to the grave site. The way he found himself so intrigued in their growth. As each and every one of these members, he could see all of them becoming something great. His mind reflected on the Sanin and their title with the three of them. And these three, as Kakashi wondered if he was training the next generation of Sanin. Not just that, maybe something far, far higher. Time skip. Two weeks went by after that. As they found themselves within the mission room, Kakashi was actually the one that spoke to Harrison 
about giving them something more difficult. As the past couple of months, Kakashi had worked harder than he's ever worked on training someone ever. He did not even work this hard in Anvu because they had been through it already so they knew more than this. Hiroshin had handed over several of the scrolls. Kakashi had told the boys about that and they had been giving them to work on. However, all of it stopped at B rank as he didn't believe that they were ready for anything above that title. So yes, however, he wanted to put their field training into the real life situation. Therefore, he asked for something higher, a C rank, to make them feel what real battle was about, to make them experience it. Time skip. Team 7 was making their way with a man known as Tazuna. For one thing, Mito and him had quickly gotten into an argument when he made an insulting comment about them all. Mito was the one that was rather boisterous to say something back and even wanting to attack said man but Kakashi assured him that he would be fine. After all, he was here as their team leader as well. However, Nuta did not trust him. There was something about this man that was just rather cagey and off-putting. Something was about him. He was lying about something. Naruto did not know why he think that, but it was just what he perceived. As they were making their way, they came across a rather unusual puddle. Naruto noticed as he glanced up towards the sky. The heat was rather pelting and yet... They have been walking for some time now and rain has not fallen once. So why would there be a puddle here? And even if there was a recent discharge of water, it would have evaporated by now. His brother had always told him to look and give everything a second overview. His mind would always tell him what his eyes could not see. Nurta glanced towards the sensei. This was a trap. He could clearly tell that. However, their Jonin sensei was not reacting in the slightest. It seems like he already knew. As Naruto stepped up his guard, knowing that the moment something happened, they would all be ready to throw down. As they stepped past the puddle, Naruto heard as they exploded out of the water and it splashed. Naruto spun around and launched. A kunai, however, it was deflected by a gomlet. But that didn't stop them from wrapping their chain around Kekashi though. Who had not moved. They ripped him apart. The team eyes went widen. Mito immediately brought her hand up and summoned four clones. They surrounded Tazuna. She's standing at the front. Whipping a kunai out as she prepared herself. Both Naruto and Sasuke dashed forward. Both of them threw a kunai at the same time. It stabbed into two links of the chain. The demon brothers curse. As they were about to rip it out of the ground but Naruto had thrown a shuriken. Right towards their left arm. The both of them. They didn't have enough time so they released the chain. He swung at Naruto but Naruto's sharingan activated as he ducked. He brought his other hand up with a gomlet. However, Nuta twists, his eyes tracking the movement perfectly. What the hell? Why is this brat so fast? Gozu cursed in his mind. As Miyazu lashed out at Sasuke, who duck? Sasuke moved to the side, going through hand sign as he did, releasing a fireball jutsu as he jumped into the sky. However, Sasuke smirked. He was hit in the arm with a shuriken and hit in the right leg with a kunai. Behind him was Mito clone, two of them who had thrown the weapons, and he jumped right into it. As he was falling, injured, Sasuke jumped upwards using a tree as he flicked off it and delivered a brutal kick to the side of his head, knocking him out cold. As for Naruto, he could not be touched. 
The demon brother was losing his shit as he watched his brother drop. But that was his mistake. He took his eyes off Naruto for a single moment. A kunai whipped past his face. However, he easily dodged it. Seems like your aim isn't shit. He wasn't able to continue as a wire wrapped around his throat and yanked him. As his body did not even touch the ground, when he saw Naruto's feet crash into his face, slamming his head into the ground, the force knocked him out cold. Naruto deactivated his eyes as his chakra seemed to calm itself. Naruto had thrown two kunais with a wire attached to each end. The force that he threw it with allowed it to stab into the ground behind the demon brother. Therefore, the wire wrapped around his throat and yanked him back. Once again, they underestimated them because they were young. And they paid the price. That is when Kakashi arrived with the ice smile on his face. Naruto did not seem surprised one bit. The moment he activated his eyes, he knew that Kakashi was still alive. Mito and Sasuke turned their gaze. Looking over, they saw the pile of broken trees and wood together. However, now Naruto understood why he did not trust this man. Something was definitely not right here. Time skip. Tazuna came clean after Kakashi, threatened to head back to the village. As he literally went to his knees in an apologetic tone, telling them that his village had scrambled together what money they had, as they weren't able to afford anything higher. But the mission was definitely a higher rank mission. But this begs the question, what would they do? They decided to continue on. Yes, they continue on with the mission. Kakashi believed in that if things got too bad that he would be able to handle it. And also, this experience might be the one that they needed to understand the true capability of the ninja world. So Team 7 headed off to complete the mission. However, just as they believed, they ran into a bigger threat as they came across Zabuza Mamakai. Kakashi Hatake took on Zabuza when he threw his massive cleaver at them. However, Kakashi got captured in a water prison. Fearing the safety of his students, he told them to run as Zabuza created two water clones. They could not stray far away from the original. He told them to get out of here. The clones started to slowly advance forward as the three of them looked at one another. His words came back to them. Those who abandon their comrades are less than trash. Listen up, said Naruto. I have a plan. As the clones were keeping their advancement in a slow and steady pace to intimidate them. The clone on the right, upon reaching a closer distance, he blurred out of sight. He appeared behind Mito and brought his blade down. However, Naruto threw a smoke bomb on the ground and it went off, blocking the sight of Zabuza and Kakashi and the final clone. They had no idea what happened inside as the second clone advanced. He jumped over a shuriken. Tch, you're gonna have to work a lot faster than that if you intend on... A flame descended from the heavens. He was hit, reduced to water. Zabuza was shocked as he looked up to see one of the kids suspended in the air, falling. It was Mito. Even Kakashi was confused, but Mito wasn't a fire user. So where did the fireball come from? Zabuza raised his blade with the intention to cleave her in half as she lashed out, aiming straight towards him with her kunai. However, he sliced her in half. Poof. Her body, poof into smoke. Zabuza hearing picked up on the whipping sound. He quickly tilted his face. As a shuriken ripped through the tape mass on his face, drawing blood, he cursed. That is when he noticed several of them. He spun his blade, deflecting them one after another. However, 
something strange happened. The groan in front of him, poof, revealing none other than the girl. His intention was to cut her down once again, but she swapped places with the last Uchiha. It was Sasuke. Sasuke opened his mouth already performing the hand sign. A fireball was sent right towards Abusa. Point blank range. He had no choice but to quickly jump away. Zabuza quickly landed, dodging the attack. However, in the process, he freed Kakashi. His instincts kicked in as he turned and blocked Naruto's strike. Surprise where this one came from. He slashed right through Naruto. However, Naruto already switched places with something, thrown by Mito into the sky. Boom! He was thrown. Luckily, bringing his blade up in the right moment to avoid some of the damage. However, he was wounded from the explosion as Naruto, the real one, landed. They had played it perfectly. Naruto had been the one using the effort to jump up into the sky. He had been the one to fire the fireball, but he had swapped place with a clone of Mito who was down below. When Sabusa was distracted by the clone, she had one of her clones transform into a shuriken, which then revealed itself and swapped place with Sasuke, who revealed the fireball right into Sabusa's face, forcing him to jump away. While the real Naruto had ran on the water a long time ago, Mito had launched a kunai into the sky, which Naruto had swapped with. Its substitution jutsu was becoming so more refined as he was able to swap with a kunai. Now that Zabuza was wounded, Kakashi told him to stay back, he would handle the rest, and he got to work. However, his body was not built like theirs. Naruto could already see the stress the Sharingan was putting on him. That is when Naruto caught the movement from the corner of his eye as a hunter descended down. The group had been a distance away because the fight had pushed towards the other side of the little stream between them. They made their way over there just in time as Kakashi collapsed. Time skip. Returning back to the house. Kakashi woke up with a realization. Zabuza was not dead. The hunter had lied. Naruto was confused because Kakashi had checked Zabuza's pulse. But he was not dead. The weapons that he used were Senba needles. Kakashi commend them on their teamwork and for getting him free. As he would be kicking their training up a notch while they were here. Soon, they met the sun. Of Tsunami in Yeri, Tazuna's grandson. It was the first time Naruto saw Mito got angry when he spoke about none of them understanding his pain. Naruto had never really took focus on Mito's life beyond the academy, despite calling himself a friend of hers. He was surprised by her rage. Something did not seem too right. As she went to blow off some steam, Naruto decided to follow after a while. He found her assault in the trees. You know, if you keep that up, one day they're gonna come back for revenge. Despite the mood that she was in, him making a joke, given how serious he had been for some time now, actually calmed her a bit. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine, she said. You know, we have been friends for some time now. And also, we've been teammates for a few months now. And I think I can say that I got to know you rather well. And I can say that you're not alright. So tell me, what's wrong, he said to her. Why did his comment anger you so much? Why aren't you angry, she said to him. I mean, given everything that you went through. Yes, I know, but he's a child, said Naruto. Children don't really understand that much. And they let their mouth do a lot of the talking. Well, you're kind of just the same. 
I'm not, she said. See what I mean? You get angry really quickly, said Naruto. But it's a part of your character. And well, who am I to tell you to change? She released a breath as she sat down on a nearby rock. I don't want to tell you, she said. Why not? Because you'll think I'm a monster. I did for some time even though, after I was told the truth. I was thinking about telling you guys, I mean, you are my teammates, but I'm scared. I'm scared what you will think after knowing the truth. You're my friend, said Naruto. And it doesn't matter what you say to me. I know that you are a good person. I'll never think that you're a monster, he said. Mito looked at him with an unreadable expression. As she released a breath. You remember the nine tails that attacked the village all those years ago? Yeah, said Naruto. Mito slowly started to lift her shirt up, surprising Naruto. As she channeled her chakra to her stomach that was now revealed. This complex ceiling array. The beast. It's sealed inside of you, isn't it? Wait, how did you... Well, given that you brought that out of the blue, and now you're showing me a rather complex Fuinjutsu, I presume that is the case. All that we were told was that the Fort Akagi sacrificed his life, and that was it. Nothing else and nothing more, and the beast was dead. However, the truth can always be fabricated. Well, yeah, you're right. It's sealed inside of me. She said looking away. However, Naruto placed his hand on her chin and turned her face to face him. His actions were purely a sign of friendship. However, Naruto has always been a physical person, touching someone, holding their hands. However, that had all changed when he lost his brother. But he seemed to be finding that small part of himself once again. As he looked right into her eyes. I told you, he said. Nothing will ever make me see you as a monster. Mito felt something twirl in her stomach. Like butterflies. As he was looking directly in her eyes, holding on to her chin. He then released it. If anything, said Naruto, you're a hero. I... I am? Of course you are, said Naruto. I mean, you're holding this burden to keep everyone safe. You're protecting and watching over everyone by using your own body as a shield. For the first time in a very long while, Naruto smiled at her. And that made me see you as an amazing person, he said. Once again, she felt that feeling in her stomach, like butterflies, as she looked at him. The feeling that she quite couldn't understand. They returned back to the house that night, Mito feeling a lot happy, as she said that she will tell Sasuke tomorrow. She wanted him to know they were teammates after all, and she did tell Sasuke. Kakashi had been there for the both times to overhear it. Yes, he had. It was her secret to tell. However, just the people that could be trusted with it. Sasuke's reaction was different from Naruto, but it wasn't a bad one. Sasuke did not think much of it, as he did not really know anything about Fuinjutsu, but that doesn't make her a different person. He even made it sound like it wasn't even a big deal, so what? You think you're better than me now, he said. As Mito actually started to laugh. For some reason she found that really really funny. Yes she did. Sasuke found himself even letting his guard down a bit around her. Yes. Speaking to her in a more casual manner as the time proceeded on. As Kakashi was observing all of this. As he was really glad how this friendship was coming along. Between the three of them. So he took it upon himself to speak to Ineri. Their training was long and hard. As Mito 
had even met someone, fearing that Gato would try to use their own family against them. Someone had to stay behind, as Zabusa would probably recover by now. However, given the explosion that he was hit with by Naruto as well, maybe a bit longer, it was Naruto's turn to stay behind. Anyone that Gato would have sent was no one really elite, probably a few thugs. As Naruto was there, Ineri was sitting awkwardly on the bridge, not quite knowing what to say. Naruto made his way up to the room as he retrieved a scroll that he had brought along with him. It was at that moment that he heard the ruckus. Step into the window, Naruto saw the actions as Ineri charged in to help his mother. However, before the bandit could strike, Naruto reached in between the two and grabbed the man's arm, holding the wrist as he slammed his fist right into the joint, gripping the blade out of it. Naruto drove the blade through the man's leg and through the wooden plank. He screamed as Naruto flipped over his shoulder, using his shoulder as a leverage point to crack his heel in the other one's face. His momentary dizziness allowed Tsunami to step away. Naruto jabbed him in the chest before knocking him back. He then ran forward and jumped, wrapping his legs around his head before, wrapping it around his neck as he brought him down and crashed his head into the earth. Rather hard, the other one who was trying to rip the blade out of his leg, Naruto jumped on his head and started to squeeze him until his face turned blue. Ineri was still shocked that he was alive. As the man had raised his blade and he had run in with his eyes closed, Naruto looked down towards him and simply gave the kid a little smile. When his eyes activated, the yellow tomo in his eyes started to react as he turned his gaze. He grabbed both of the unconscious bandits. I'll make sure no other come this way. Wait, are you going to do it? Are you guys going to fight Gato? He asks, looking towards Naruto. Yeah, you said that this isn't a man that we could stop. But today I'm going to prove you wrong. And maybe, today you just prove your own self wrong. By being the very thing that you thought. You could never see again. A hero. Both Ineri and Naruto said the word at the same time before Naruto took off. Breezing towards the bridge. As Naruto was running through the forest. His chakra started to swell once again. As his footsteps were creating indentation in the ground. Maybe this was a time for him to try out that technique that he's been working on Naruto thought. As his body started to swell with chakra, unaware to him the chakra inside of his body started to react to his will and his mind. As he dashed past few branches and trees, they were starting to be affected. The entire forest was being affected by the unusual heat that was resonating from him. However, this heat was not only burning but it was destroying. Whatever these yellow Sharingan was, they possessed extraordinary abilities and powers. And it was finally time that Naruto became aware of that as he dashed towards the bridge. But guys, be in so right here. If you want to see next parts and do, like, subscribe, comment down below and turn on that bell notification they posted. But I'm off for now. See you guys soon. Peace guys.